So I went and visited my mom in February earlier this year. And whenever I go and visit, it always seems like she has flowers in her kitchen. So this time when I went over there, I decided that I was gonna do a painting of the flowers. So what I did is I took the flowers out to her patio area and I did this still life painting right here. So it's her birthday coming up in a few days and I've decided that I wanna give her this painting for her birthday. The only thing is, is I wanna build a really simple frame for it before I send it to her. And the reason that I wanna build a simple frame is because my mom has a lot of artwork hanging inside her house and she really doesn't have a whole lot of wall space left to hang artwork. At least I don't think she does. So by doing a really simple frame, which is basically gonna be just one piece of wood going all the way around the painting, that'll keep it narrow enough to where it'll be much easier for her to find a wall to hang it on than if I built a really wide frame for it. So anyway, I'm gonna walk out to the work area right now and get all set up. But in the meantime, I'm gonna show you guys a little time-lapse footage of doing this painting. So the backer board has been cut and the painting fits really good on it. So I'm just using quarter inch plywood for this backer board, which is plenty strong to hold this painting. 
Now, occasionally I'll use 3 8 backer board, which also works good, but for a really simple frame, quarter inch is plenty strong. And the one thing that I like to do when I build my backer boards for these simple frames is just use one piece of plywood rather than use four different pieces and miter them and nail them together in the corners. By using one piece, the nice thing about it is I know for sure that it won't go out of square on me as I'm attaching the rustic wood to the front of it. If I had four different pieces and it somehow went out of square, even an eighth of an inch, then there's a chance that the painting just wouldn't fit right. But by having one piece of plywood, I know for sure that the painting is gonna fit exactly like I want it to fit. Okay, so I've got the piece of wood that I wanna make the frame out of. And it's actually a really interesting piece of wood because it's got all these really big knots in it. The only thing is it has quite a few nails in it and these nails are rusty, so they can be a little bit difficult to pull, especially when they're in really deep. So the main thing is I just need to make sure that I get all the metal out of this piece of wood and none of these nails break and get left behind. And this piece of wood is actually gonna be a bit of a challenge to rip into pieces to begin with because it does have a lot of deep cracks in it. So as I'm ripping it, there's actually a really good chance that a lot of these pieces will probably end up breaking. But as long as I get enough pieces to make this frame out of, it should be good. Okay, well, I didn't think this was gonna happen, but the entire end of this piece of wood broke off and it's got one of these really nice knots that I like. So this piece is not gonna work. But this piece here actually should still work just fine. It's plenty long to still make this frame out of. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rip it into a few slices and hopefully everything holds together and I can get enough pieces of wood to actually make this frame out of. Okay, so the table saw ended up destroying most of the wood that I was planning on using to build this frame. And I kind of predicted that that could happen because it is old brittle wood, but I guess I'm lucky because I ended up getting four pieces that'll work to make this frame out of. Now, if one of the smaller pieces breaks, then I have one extra piece that'll work, but that's it. This piece here ended up being a little bit too short. So I'm really hoping that when I miter the corners that nothing breaks. But with this kind of wood, there's always a chance that it could break when I miter the corners. And if that happens, then it's just not gonna work out using this wood. But after spending all this time ripping it down with the table saw, I'm really hoping that I can get these pieces installed and that everything works out.
Okay, so I got all the corners mitered. Everything worked out really good. No more damage to the pieces. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue the pieces down and then nail them with these 18 gauge one inch brad nails. So this is where I really need to take my time and make sure these pieces are exactly where I want them. So what I'm gonna do is just start with one piece, glue it, nail it, and then very carefully check the next piece. And there are times where the pieces need to be mitered, like even a 16th of an inch as I go around. But this is where I really just need to take my time and make sure everything's lined up exactly where I want it so that everything will look good when it's done. So I got all the pieces nailed on and everything looks really good. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind this plywood back all the way around the frame. And what this will do is it'll make the plywood much less visible when you look at the frame from the side. And what I'm gonna use is my four and a half inch grinder with a 40 grit flap disc on it. And these actually work out really good for removing wood quickly. So with any luck, I'll have all this plywood beveled back in just a few minutes. So the grinding on the frame went really good and it's all done. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my palm sander with some 80 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna sand the entire frame, both front and back. And right now these edges in the front are kind of sharp. So I'm gonna round those over a little bit and basically just smooth everything out and get it all ready for some stain. So the sanding's all done and I'm finally ready to put the stain on it. So I'm going to be using this mini wax water-based wood stain and it's tinted to a honey gold color. So hopefully the color will look really good with the flower painting. And the thing that I like about using this water-based wood stain is that it dries fairly quickly. And with a project like this, I'm just trying to finish it quickly so that I can send it to my mom as soon as possible. So I'm gonna stain it tonight and then come out tomorrow and hopefully the stain will be dry and I can continue on with the project. So the frame had a chance to dry overnight. So now I'm gonna distress it with this 220 grit sandpaper. So I've got the frame distressed, and now I'm gonna do something that I've never actually done before. 
What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my wood burner and I'm gonna make this a custom happy birthday mom frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write happy birthday mom going all the way around the frame. Now, I've never actually done anything like this before and I really have no idea how it's gonna look, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot and I guess we'll see what happens. Okay, so I wrote happy birthday mom 2018 going all the way around the frame. And it's like I thought before I started, writing all these letters and numbers was not exactly a fast, easy job. In fact, it probably took around, somewhere around two hours or so to go over these letters and numbers several times to get them dark enough to where they actually look good. So the next step is I'm going to paint the plywood backer board black and then once the paint dries, I'm going to go ahead and install the painting. So that's it. It's just a real simple frame around the painting. And sometimes that's all a painting really needs. And the nice thing about it is that it keeps the artwork narrow so that it makes it much easier to find a wall to hang it on, especially if you've got a lot of artwork like my mom does. So I sure hope she has a wall to hang it on. So anyway, the last thing I need to do is just pack it up and send it to her. So that's it for now. And I hope to see you guys soon. Oh, hey guys, me, myself, and I here. Just kicking back after finishing the project, having a little bit of H2O. So we got the artwork all boxed up and shipped to mom. And according to the tracking number, it's gonna be there just in time for her birthday. So anyway, let's just hope that happens. So when it comes to making an art video like this, it actually takes a lot more than just doing the artwork to make it happen. So I did the painting and carpentry on this project and me did the camera work and myself did the editing. And I think what makes a really great team is when everybody has the same end goal in mind and everybody brings different ideas to the table to help us reach the same end result. And like, with these guys here, 
it just seems like whenever we put our heads together, we're all just on the same page. So cheers to you guys for sticking with us till the very end. Take care now.